Today's sponsors are Angelo's Interiors, specialising in kitchens, bedrooms and bathrooms. Go and visit their showroom today in Gillingham. Their web address is angelosinteriors.com and Dimidishi Associates, Chartered Structural and Civil Engineers. Based in the UK with a worldwide reach. Visit their website on dimidishiassociates.com. Welcome to the Cheryl Podcast with me, Simon Burridge. And me, Rachel Burridge. Generally, I'll, I'll sort of, you know, I'm up for it. Yeah, yeah, I will, really. Because yeah. yeah. we all get naked halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I want that film. It might frighten people. <laughs> Did your guy not mention that? Is it Callum? Uh, yeah, Callum. Yeah, he's on holiday for the next couple of days. Bugger. <laughs> right, so what we ask you to do before we start, we, we ask you... Yeah, give a moony. <laughs> no, we ask you to get up and take the uh, clapper ball to go in front of the camera, say who you are, give it a clap, come back, sit down. Okay, so... Where we start it. Well, this one here? Yeah, that yeah, one, right, yeah. Okay. The only camera that's on right, the chair. Right, so... <laughs> so All right, I know, yeah. you're used, I know you're used to loads of cameras. <laughs> Don't start bragging. Right, so you just want me to that say... Right. Your name and what you are. Kelly Tate, right, and then, and then just what do allow... Like, that's it. Right, okay, sorry. Female? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right, okay. Um, tell me, just any time? Anytime you want, any time you right. want. Right. Kelly Tolhurst, Member of Parliament for Rochester and Street. Perfect. <laughs> we'll put that back up there so everyone knows who you are. That's not my first question then. Who is this person? <laughs> right, well, there's another thing we do. We have a sign up there yeah. and it always falls off the wall. <laughs> and now we've made a thing of it from the very start. If you can time, for, and you clap your head, say, 10 minutes from now, right. if it falls off the wall 10 minutes from now and you're the nearest after the year, £100 from us goes to a charity of your Oh, choice. very good. Right, OK. You haven't hooked that up, though. No, I haven't hooked it up. <laughs> No, right, so it. how, um, yeah, right, okay, so... Shall I get some information about it? Is it new tape? It's new tape. Okay, new tape, so new double-sided tape. <laughs> right, new tape. I'll give you an average, 25 minutes, 30 minutes usually, but you've got new double-sided, you, you know, as you're special, you've got new double-sided <laughs> tape. Um, You'll never guess it anyway, someone's two seconds mm, away. <laughs> someone's already two All right. seconds away. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, 42 minutes. Right, Ooh. from now. Yeah. Right, okay, perfect. <laughs> right, Kelly, thank you for coming on the podcast. <laughs> Very weird having an MP with us. And um, sorry about the red curtains. <laughs> you, you don't come, oh, out, right, don't right, come, out, in hi- don't come out in hives or anything, do you? <laughs> no, so no. just so you know about this podcast, right, we just talk about people's lives yeah. and how you got to where you are today. Mm-hmm. Our one rule is we don't do political, <laughs> right? Yeah. So what should we do? We get an MP in. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, had, you know, how did you become an MP? What did you do beforehand? Everything like that. Yeah. So, well, um, yeah. So, I, I'm, I'm sort of. I always say to people, I'm like an accidental MP um, because I never had, never ever in a million years would I ever have thought that I would have even tried to become a member of parliament let alone actually be sort of accepted as a parliament as as a parliamentarian so as a candidate but basically um i had been running my own business in in rochester for about 17 years what was that so I um, am a marine surveyor by trade, so right, okay. I, and that, so surveying boats and also um, p- providing paints to boat builders, boat manufacturers. Right. Um, because I'm a daughter of a boat builder, okay. my dad um, has got a boat. Well, had a boat yard in in Rochester because I lost my dad a couple of years ago, All but. Right. Um, um, so yeah, so but prior to that, um, so I started the business in twenty uh, two thousand and two. And prior to that, I'd been working in the food industry. So I worked for New Zealand Lamb. I worked for a seafood company and a French dairy. And I used to sell to the supermarkets. Oh, right. Okay. Um, But it it was a complete career change. But I'd always wanted to do something on my own. And I'd left school at 16, gone to college, um, 
didn't really like that, went into work and basically... What my, did you study at college? So I, I first went into, uh, I, well, I joined a, a leisure and tourism course because at the time when I was, I mean, I don't know how old you guys are. I'm but, five years older than you. Right. <laughs> I'm about well, saying your age. So when, when we were at school locally, you know, there were very sort of narrow, if you went to a comprehensive school locally, there were quite narrow opportunities for you. So it was either pushing you into leisure and tourism, travel and tourism, Business. <laughs> business yeah. um i didn't really know what i wanted to do um anyway i, I didn't uh, last at that went straight out into work and i fell into new zealand farmers and new zealand farmers paid for me whilst i was working in london to basically do my postgraduate diploma right, okay. so i spent um four years traveling um to college twice a week <clears throat> twice a week whilst working in London mm -hmm. for four years but they pay for me so it was like a mini apprenticeship I always yeah. say yeah. it was an apprenticeship but yeah it, it, so you commuted to London yeah. so I commuted London work similar to you at that age right yeah, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I did my um, like degree and then whenever you used to have the you know the big summers and the big Christmases because they were different from yeah. universities you used to get like two three weeks off at Christmas yeah. half terms they used to sort of be like two or three weeks yeah. and I used to go and work in London with that's my mum yeah, yeah. I loved it yeah I loved and, it up there. that's right and it was great and you know it was really um, so you know I I, you know, I loved that. I love sales. I obviously, uh, my hobby was sailing. So I was, and, you know, coming from a, a sort of a family that sort of been on the river for mm. donkey's years and uh, I just wanted to do something on my own and the opportunity did. So, and, 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 and so that's what I've been doing. And I... I've always, I, I didn't come from a political family. Mum and dad were really engaged with current affairs. We were, we used to talk about politics, yeah. but we weren't political. No. Mm -hmm. And um, what happened was where my dad's boatyard was in Rochester, um, the playing fields opposite the boatyard, the council decided to close the local school down right. and build on the playing fields. <clears throat> And all the local community were sort of against it. Mm. And and I was like, this is ridiculous. You know, we've got five football fields that are really busy, really popular, really need them mm. in the Medway yeah. towns. So basically, I, I worked with the community, even though I was living over this side of the river, right. yeah, Strood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I worked with them and, and sort of fought the council on building on the playing fields. Mm. And then an, an, a, 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 one of the councillors at the time, a guy called Ted Baker, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Ted yeah. Baker, <laughs> who um, was, you know, a very sort of, you know, long standing councillor across across Rochester and Strood over the years came up to me and said you know Kelly actually you know we've, we'd quite like to have you with us rather than against Aww. us and so that was the first time I'd ever thought about even thinking yeah, about joining yeah. a political party mm. so I joined the party uh, the Conservative Party and then um, he basically ended up standing as a local councillor mm. which was fine because that was just really focused on my local local yeah, yeah. local yeah. issues um, and then I was quite happy with that. And then obviously we had um, the, the guy who was the MP at the time defected to another party, created a by-election. And someone said to me, you should go for that. I said, oh, they never have me. And, well, I ended up being the candidate. And, you wow. know, uh, the first time I, I heard of you, I was going, I was getting onto the, I was going up Gosh. Strood past the, what's the Strood, what's that school with the, with the windmill? Oh, Strood Academy. Strood Academy. Strood Academy. Oh, I was yeah. getting onto the Ato and then there was a banner with your oh, face on right. it. And that must have been about 2016. Yeah, something. yeah. What? That was near when we moved Yeah, because yeah, I'm, I'm, I was born in Northfleet. Rachel's oh, yeah. a chef. She was born over that way. Aww. <laughs> and, um, so, yeah, we got together and then we moved to Strood and we live up, um, sort of near, the recall road. Yeah, area. yeah, yeah, yeah. Strood, yeah. 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 Nearly, not Street far from the Rochester Football. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Which yeah. is Football a bit weird, Club. isn't it? Yeah, Rochester yeah. Football Club in Strood. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, yeah, that was the first time we see you. And yeah. Strood, if I'm honest, Strood used to be a place you drove through to get to, to Rochester. Yeah, that's right. And I used to be, oh, Strood. No. But I must admit, we've been here since 2016. Mm, yeah. And it's a lovely little town, actually. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm biased because I have grown up here so yeah. i i went to what was chapter school which was on cliff road yeah. oh, which yeah. then moved which became strood academy and i had one year at the strood academy site when it was 
still called Chapter. Right. And, um, yeah, I mean, we're lucky in Strood and the surrounding areas because we've, I always think we've got the best of both worlds. We're really close to the town, mm -hmm. but we've still got quite a lot of green space. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you can sort of, you feel semi-rural, mm. yeah. um, particularly in places where, like, where you are. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. We're and back onto a field. That's what sold it to us. Field, yeah. And, you know, we've got, you know, Strood's a, you know, Strood's, it's, it's small in some respects, so yeah. you're close to everything. Mm. So I think we're really lucky and, you know, I've, I, I'm sadly, well, you know, I always say to people, a lot of my friends moved away, did go, gone to different places, but I'm one of the, you know, I've stayed yeah. where yeah. I've lived really. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, 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 you know, apart from sort of small stints in else pl in other places, mm. I, this is still my home. Mm. Really. Exactly. So yeah. I've been about, I've yeah. been Kings Hill and um, Hadlow. But good. I've been about <laughs> <laughs> in, in more ways than one, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah. I, I've travelled. Tra tra no. yeah, I've been about. <laughs> travelled around the M25. Yeah, yeah you know? basically. Yeah. But I always end up back in this sort of area within yeah. eight miles of where I was born for some yeah. reason. But mm -hmm. it's, I think it's because it's just convenient. You've got a bit of countryside. Mm -hmm. London's just up the road. You, can, right. you can watch a show in your hotel. Yeah. If you get away just before the last song, <laughs> yeah. you're home in half hour. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean, it's yeah. just perfect. Yeah. Oh, no. And, we, and, and this is the thing around about the Medway towns anyway. And it's not until you start going to different places around the country that you do realise how much we've got. How blessed we are. Yeah. I know it sounds weird, but only recently have <clears throat> I, I appreciated how, like you said, how green it is around oh, here. Yeah. I know we're going to say me then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, babe. No. <laughs> um, but how green it is in Kent. I know they say, like, Kent is the Garden of England, but. I used to just think, oh yeah, whatever. Yeah. But when you actually go to other places, you yeah. realise how much green space we actually have in yeah. Kent. Yeah. It's, it's Don't amazing. Say that. Stop building on it. <laughs> well, that's right. Um, you know, that there is that challenge. But but we do have, you know, we do have we're close to London. We've got you know, we've got access to dry ski slopes, swimming mm. pools, yeah. ice rinks, town mm. centres, um, you know, work. You know, one of the one of the things about the Medway area and, and this area was that um we've always people have always come to the towns for work mm. because of our industries and you know the fact that we also ha had a massive military presence mm. at one time mm. um across the sort of medway towns yep. um so yeah i mean and, and i've noticed when you go to other parts you think you just take it for granted so mm. you know whilst people will moan about certain things about this area we are used to. i yeah. think we're very mm. lucky yeah, mm. yeah. Because we did have a, a conversation the other day about the statue in Chatham, didn't we? And how he's constantly got that cone on his head. Yeah. And if he doesn't, it's like, oh, well, where's the cone gone? It's that's not, right. it's not normal right. now. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. Right. So um, you deal with Rochester and Strood. Yep. Neighbouring MPs. Yes. So what would that be, Chatham and... So you've got Chatham and Aylesford okay. and then Gillingham and Raynham. That's, are they all conservative? At the moment they are, yep. So, so have you ever been in a situation where you've... We've been beside someone that's not with the spin like uh, Labour or something like that. And how would you liaise with them? Do you li liaise with them anyway? Yeah, you do. So in Parliament, so from a local local mm. perspective, you know, you're you know, there's only one per constituency. Yeah. So you sort of do your thing in your yeah. constituency. But in Parliament, actually, um, and what the media don't always show. What is, surprise, yeah. Yeah. So people should think PMQs and the sort of um I don't know what do you want to the, the shouting the aggression yeah, yeah, yeah. is is how parliament show. That's yeah, all they want to show yeah, yeah. how parliament yeah. is but actually that's not the case yeah. if it was like that it wouldn't really function all mm. the time no, if you go on if you go on the parliament channel when there's nothing happening <coughs> there's about five of you in there asking genuine questions yeah. and getting genuine answers absolutely you know. and 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 also I think you know yes there's political differences but also you do, you know, the best way of getting something agreed is by working cross party. So, you know, you sit on select committee. So at the moment I'm sitting on the Northern Ireland Select Committee. Right. Okay. So there's like three Conservatives, there's um an SDLP from mm. Northern Ireland, the DUP, Labour, um, and you work together and mm. quite often there's you know, you come to a conclusion together yeah. for your reports. And if you've got a particular campaign in the House of Commons, you do want to get opposition support. So yeah. your go-to sort of MP colleagues um, uh, who who are from the other parties and say, oh, will you sign up for this? Will mm. you back my campaign? And quite often there is a lot of cross-party yeah. mm. uh, cross working. And, you know, there's some people within 
the Labour Party, who, you know, I have immense respect for and who I regard as pals. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so they try and sort of show that everyone's at each other all yeah. the time, but it's, it's, it's not then, quite like that. Then in turn, the people watching that, are at each other. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it makes it's a conservative right? person yeah. person yeah. be at a Labour person yeah, because they right. don't see the uh, you know the coalition every now and then. That's you know. right. So going back to obviously God, I used a big word, coalition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got to get over that. <laughs> well. Going back to friendships, do you have friends that are <clears throat> of the other parties that you have to sort of say, when you come around to my house, no politics, you know, we are actually yeah, friends. Yeah, do you switch off? Do you, so I've so look I am who you know I am who I am I'm a conservative that's who I am Mm. but if you want to be whatever you are whoever you are that's fine Mm. I'm never really going to get into a to a to a debate, debate, or I'm never going to make it a problem because politics, views, um, values—it's it, all personal to yeah. everyone. Um, you know, I'm sort of being upfront about mine, but you know, I'm not going to. I don't. I, I would never. Someone, yeah, I mean, I've got friends. I mean, one of the biggest compliments I've ever had, and uh, and I, I'll tell her I've said this today. I'll show her <laughs> this pocket. So, um, my friend who I've known for a long time is, you know. A real staunch uh, Labour supporter, and um, we um, we had a, um, a, a conversation once. And my friend, who I'm very incredibly proud of her, she's a PhD student from Cambridge, and she knows who she is now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. and uh, she's very successful. And we had a debate one evening, and she said to me, "Oh, I don't like talking to you. You mess with my head." <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and and I just and I took that as quite a, a compliment yeah. because I'm not uh, a, a Cambridge educated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I took that as a, well. I that's great, that. but no, I mean that's the th- you know ultimately politics is personal, mm. and you know whatever political persuasion you are. Despite what the media say, actually most of us are good people. Hmm. You know, we're all trying to. We've we've decided on public service. Hmm. Um, we put ourselves. We're putting our heads above the parapet on things sometimes, yeah. and actually everyone is working for the betterment of the country or their area, yeah. whatever political party yeah. you're. Yeah. Their you're mindset part. is they want the best. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So I, I was thinking about what I was going to say next, but it didn't come. I was going to say I've swung <laughs> in the past. <laughs> We but, don't want to know about that. Really? I'm to say, it's all coming out yeah. today, isn't it? What I'm trying to say is I'm not going to say what party I'm, I'm with because it doesn't matter. Yeah. But I've, I've, I've swung from party to party. Yeah. And personally, I feel that's a healthy way to be because you are able to be convinced otherwise. Mm. See where I'm coming yeah, from? Absolutely. Um, do you agree with that? Do you agree with the fact, you, you know, I know you've got to stay as conservative. Oh, this hopefully this isn't, has gone into politics this question. <laughs> it's a good question yeah yeah but you know surely it's far better to be someone like me you know handsome yeah. and a swing voter <laughs> no a swing voter i'm running because i've added a joke now i've messed myself up <laughs> surely it's more healthy to be someone that's easily convinced than someone that's just fixed on a party regardless of if they're performing well in their eyes or not do you see where i'm coming from yeah yeah uh, it, it, but again it goes back to what i said about it being so personal mm. yeah you know there would be a number of reasons why you would choose to support one political party or another whether it be at election time or for the whole of your life you know and your experiences and you know upbringings and the influences around you will have a major impact on whether you are a staunch Hmm. Yeah. you know lifelong supporter of one yeah. party or whether you are a, a, a swing voter and um you know so it is so i think as with all things you know having that um you know difference is you know, really you know we're all we're all di- i know it sounds sort of like yeah. a rather sort of bland response hmm. but it's sort of you know everyone's different so i think you know and there are so many reasons why people will make a decision on on a lot of things you know it could be very specific yeah. people will could make a political decision based on something that might not necessarily affect them yeah. But then others will be completely focused on what it is exactly yeah, affects, affects them, them directly. Yeah. yeah, but unfortunately, a lot of it's decided on what they've been told. 
through the media. Yeah, mm. that's right. I mean, the, the, you know, the media is really, um, really and powerful <laughs> and in control. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and that's why, mm. you know, it's incumbent on us as politicians to do our best to get that, get our messages out. But, you know, unfortunately, and I, and I do think it's sad, I mean, I always respected um, the, you know, I, I, you know, I've always respected sort of politicians before I was involved in it because, you know, they, uh, you know, they're in a, pos- a privileged position. But the problem is, I think the narrative now around politicians is that, you know, we're these bad people all out for ourselves. We're all rich. On a jolly. And, you know, yeah, we're yeah. all on a jolly. Yeah. It's like the tax man, isn't it? Everyone goes, oh, yeah. tax man. <laughs> But but the reality. What time's our limo coming? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's and actually that's an interesting one. When I turn up to meetings sometimes or visits, people are say, "Oh, are you on your own?" I say, "Yeah." And uh, but yeah, and 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 you know the the, dis- the sad thing about that is that you know I do know that um, it does put people off. Mm. Without, and and, and the, the, the worst thing for democracy, you know, whether I'm an MP in the future or not, it doesn't matter. But what you want is you want real people with real experiences and people who have had a life, people who have been mm. successful, people who have had all those different experiences who want to come into politics. Yeah. Mm. I don't yeah. think you'll ever stop people wanting to be an MP, mm. but actually you want good people. Yeah. 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 So, do you get taught how to act and what to say in front? Yeah, any of the public training, MP? No, nothing. Nothing. So, uh, Not this even is like the honourable gentleman and all that. You just well, get... you get sort of told that that's the convention. The the, the joke is actually, I mean, and uh, when um, so when I wa- so I had never been to Parliament actually <clears> until. <throat> I was elected, mm. so I'd never done a tour of the House of Commons, right, yeah. never been anywhere near the chamber, so it was a brand new experience for me. And when I won, the neighbouring MP, Raymond Tristy for Gillingham and Raynham, said to, rang me in over the weekend because the election was on the Thursday and we were back in the House of Commons on the Monday. Mm. And he said, Kelly, I'll meet you at Port Cullis House on Monday morning, so you, I'll, I'll show you the ropes. Aww. And it, it literally turned up at Port Cullis House and uh, they gave us a pass. They gave me a, a laptop, <laughs> a locker key, and, and that was it. it. Get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And, and the, the first week was hell because, <clears throat> obviously, I people have been emailing me. Yeah over that weekend on this new parliament email address that I'd had. And, you know, I was in a panic mode, really. Mm. Mm. I've got all these people who need help or things to be dealt with. Mm. And, oh, my God, you know. Yeah. I, so what year was that, sorry? That was 2015. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. okay. So, yeah. um, so literally overnight. So it was 15, we moved, moved house 15, we didn't did, we? Yeah. yeah, so it's 15, not 16. Yeah. 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 yeah, 2015. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so it was sort of, you know, uh, you went – and and – you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to be able to do my best, and that's well, the panic. The first time you want to be the best <laughs> you can possibly that's be. That's it. So, so would you say that they maybe the Houses of Parliament need to do it? Obviously, not not a certain party, the mm. actual House, yeah. some sort of training and in, in induction. Yeah, I think I think you know it's so. Luckily for me, because I'd run my own business for seventeen years, I sort of you know I'm used to. Being a self starter, yeah, yeah. I had some experience about how you employ people, you know, all, all of those sort of things. So I was able to say, right, okay, I can manage this. But yeah. if if you hadn't been in that position, yeah. you know, you've never had to deal with the recruitment process yeah. or um, and just got thrown in the deep end, yeah, exactly, yeah. or set things up, or you know, think about things like you know, we had to find constituency offices, get insurance for that, public liability insurance, employers' liability insurance. Yeah. You have to do all these things, and we, it's that. literally like running a small, a little business, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, MPs offices, and um, and yeah, and the reality of it is, you know, you you do need a team. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the you know the level of communication. And things that come into an MP's office, you just cannot physically no, do it no, on your own. Definitely not. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, you know, it, it's fine. Um, um, and are you allowed to still run your old, your old business? <clears throat> so, the way it works for MPs is that you can have, um, y- you are allowed to do things. It's quite legal at the moment. They're they're debating it at the moment. Right. Um, you are allowed to have 
what people call second jobs. So, right. for example, you get a lot of people who are doctors or nurses who keep their hand in and, you know, people who may do bits and bobs of things. I personally, when I was elected, I am i don't actually work, I don't work in the business. Mm. So, you know, the whole idea of that was that, you know, if I was going to be an MP, I'd do it, do it full time. Yeah, so, right, okay. so, yeah, so I, I it's not something that I've... Um, so, with that business, so you no longer you, have your business? Yeah, though, I was going to say, did you I mean. give it to someone? No, 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 no. So, I'm still a director. Um, right, so, okay. it's still mine, uh, but my father ran it, you know, I mean, oh, right. and that's the joke. You know, Dad said to me, you know, because having run my own business um it gave me the opportunity to be the member of parliament really because mm. i had time to campaign right, yeah. um if i worked for someone else it might have been hard yeah. to do that yeah, yeah. and uh well, the, the joke was with my poor old dad um he said no kelly you go off and do this by election for six weeks i'll, I'll run everything for six, for weeks. six weeks <laughs> <laughs> six weeks turned into six months which turned into six years yeah, yeah. and um so yeah but you know again you can't do it without the support of your family yeah, no. and mum and dad you know again they probably became more political once i had got elected right um but yeah but they you know i'm lucky you know i had parents that basically said do it. Go you yeah, could yeah. Get, you you know have a go. Oh, Doesn't matter so if you nice. fail. Just have a go. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's so nice that they have that support for you and they because obviously you don't you don't want to know their political views and stuff like that because they might not um, they will support you yeah, but yeah. they might not be conservative. Yeah, as such. well that's so, right. But I but I also think I was lucky because and and I and I say that and I I became I've developed my political views because I was lucky enough to grow in a household where you could basically have discussions and have differences of opinion. Mm. So I, you know, we talked about things as a family, but you could disagree and it was fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where some families would tell you off. <laughs> yeah. So I That's feel I'm, so mm. my parents are to blame, really, <laughs> because they sort of gave me that freedom i suppose um, yeah, so you, to have the debates yeah. and have the yeah. difference of opinion and, wrong with yeah. that. and having the sort of your own thought mm. um, yeah. which i was like you know so there we go <laughs> oh no i like that i like no, that her daughter has her own faults doesn't yeah. she <laughs> yeah. definitely and it's yeah. you know and, and and well yeah i mean because uh, um, if we ever say to her oh no, well but you're wrong put an argument towards us don't we and she says well actually i've done this this, and this and i've said this and you're like okay then yeah that's good that's great just try and change our minds sometimes she got everything at school at um, junior school she was everything (laughs) but she couldn't get school counselor she She couldn't no 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 um, captain it was um she got captain it was class it was counselor no, it was. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was sorry. Yeah, oh, that's, uh, sorry about her. Sorry. <laughs> no, I thought you were the one that she gave me. <clears> yeah, she got everything. Yeah, she she got everything, was captain, yeah. everything, but she could not, for the life of her, get school um, counselor. school counselor. Oh, yeah, our right. son who doesn't care. <laughs> he's he's counselor. <laughs> oh, he's one of those oh, yeah. kids. Like, yeah, okay, I'll do this if you want me so to. Or she yeah, got I'm a voice message. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's school counsellor. Like, she couldn't believe it. She <laughs> yeah. was so jealous. Uh, yeah. She was like, that's the one thing I didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, no, I mean, and, well, and also it's quite funny because my my niece, who's 13 now, uh, when um, I first got involved, she was only sort of four. And, you know, it's, she's sort of seen, she's grown up with me being a, a member of parliament so to speak mm. and she and I and actually she sees me as a female role model mm. right. so she's quite independent I mean her her mother is uh, independent as well you know she's mm. another uh, f- force but um, but but yeah I mean it's uh, it's been good for her to see you know another mm. you know, strong mum yeah. strong auntie mm. and yeah, uh, she's quite she's quite funny now at 13 <laughs> Like, yeah, I've, I've always instilled in Tilly like, she's like oh when I grow up I want to do this I want to do that I want to get a nice car I said you work for it then I said don't let anyone else pay for it yeah. I said if you want these things you go out and get them and you mm. go and work and then it, it's that sense of achievement That's within right. you That's and right. I said you can do anything you want she's like yeah and yeah, she can, she can. She's, and she's, she's so she's, intelligent yeah, it's unbelievable really no, it's, very, it's very exciting actually I think for young youngsters now yeah. mm. opportunities I think there are for you know in mm. some respects they're bigger opportunities mm. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, right, go on. going through obviously your journey, have you ever had? You must obviously get a lot of abuse and a lot of negative <laughs> comments towards you. Can I jump in quickly? Oh, right, I, 
we obviously this podcast only began a couple of months yeah. and, and it's doing all right. But they go, who are you going to get on? Who are you going to get on? I said, well, we've got um, MP Kelly Tolkers coming on. Like I've said this to a couple of, oh, have you? Will you tell her that <laughs> someone keeps nicking my bins? <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you sick of people talking to you about bins, even though it's got absolutely nothing to do with you? Yeah, well, I'm glad you recognise that. Yeah, they think, <laughs> they think you're a part yeah. of the council. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. think you work for the council. I don't ever remember seeing you pick up my bins and empty them. <laughs> no, no. You're welcome to, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's 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 quite interesting. So I I made a decision when I was first elected that no matter what people got in touch with me about, I would try and deal with it for them rather than pass them on. <laughs> so the consequence of that is I do deal with people who potentially have had their bins nicked. <laughs> And, you know, I will, um, yeah, basically, whether it's a small issue or a large issue, because quite frankly, people sometimes don't understand the difference between a counsellor and a exactly. MP. Exactly. And, you know, they just know that they're a person that they can contact for help or support or whatever that is. You're a voice for them, basically. Yeah, voice exactly. That will hopefully be listened to by the council. Yeah, exa yeah, exactly. So it's sort of one of those things where I don't have any powers of um, direction or necessary influence over the council. But what I can do is ask questions and try and help them or try and get the council to take mm. a decision or try and you know raise the issue um so we do i deal with you know i will deal with any piece of casework that anyone comes yeah. to me with even if it is um sort of you know quite you know not 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 so serious you know mm. you know your bins is not as serious as someone who maybe got you know not getting the support they need from the hospital for mm. example mm -hmm. or you know there's a legal issue or there's um you know a financial issue yeah. or a housing issue you know there's it's so quite, many things it's quite funny because the last post i i see of yours was um talking about the roadworks oh yeah and i jumped <laughs> on the bandwagon yeah. just like the bin man <laughs> Because you mentioned you mentioned Arriva buses, I went talking about Arriva buses. Yeah. I said our daughter's not getting picked up. They keep leaving them stranded, the school kids stranded. And it was, and I said, I don't well, know what I said. I said something like that. We're paying a certain amount of money a yeah, year, yeah, and the yeah, bus yeah. just doesn't turn up with no notice. Hmm. It's happened yeah. twice this week. Yeah, that's hmm. interesting. Well, it is. It's quite yeah. interesting. So that particular issue with the traffic, the only reason I found out about that was um, I had Arriva in. To and my office, it, yeah. because I was sort of, you know, raising some of the issues with mm. people on the peninsula with regards to one of the bus services yeah. oh, right. and in another part of the constituency. And they sort of said, well, you know, we, we we understand and we're sorry and we went through a load of things. But did you know that the council were going to shut the road for, th for three months? And, and and that's how I found out. Mm. So. Right. But anyway, you know, I mean, a, lot that's of, a, a lot of the bus stuff is, is human error for us. There's been times when the boys' school, the boys' grammar school's been closed, the girls' grammar school's been open, and the yeah. drivers looked to see if there's a load of boys yeah. and gone straight past mm, with yeah. one girl just uh, stopped. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. human error. You, yeah. you can yeah. sort of understand. Yeah. But then there's times when there's just that number of bus just isn't there. No, mm. I know. And mm. and my, my niece has had <clears throat> challenges as well, sort of coming from, you know, trying to get from sort of Chatham to yeah. home. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, and that's the thing. And so people do, so what would happen in that? So parents mm. do get in touch with me mm. and will say, look, you know, uh, we're not happy with our daughter or son being left, mm. you know, and what my, would, my, my immediate response will be is, you know, quite often I won't know what the intricacies are on all the bus routes. Of course. Mm. But what I do is I will write to Arriva and say, you know, this is what's happened. Mm. What's your response? Get a response from them, see what they say, mm. see whether we're going to take it further. Mm -hmm. In this case, I actually got them into the office for a meeting because I'd had a number of issues that I wasn't necessarily satisfied satisfied with some of the responses yeah. I was getting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um so it's easy I've to heard sort from of Rachel have a few times as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um and you know mm. and, and particularly with school services and services for young people and you know it is worrying for parents and the young people themselves yeah. because you know it's part of the day where you can't control where they are. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, if you're it a is. parent. It it's is. frightening. We've yeah, had it a is. call from our daughter saying they haven't let me on the bus. There's a safety guy outside and he won't yeah. let me say the bus is too um, too you know full. Yeah. When her 
friend has got a seat for her, has kept a seat mm. for her. So yeah. they left and her so on the corner. Our 11 year old wow. has been yeah, left 11. in the dark. Yeah. She, yeah, um, she was in year seven, yeah, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. So she in the was dark. 11. Her first year, been left in the dark. Oh, okay. And know. it was raining. She wasn't late. And she yeah, just yeah. happened to be beaten by the other kids. Going yeah, to I mean, things like that, you know, people, yeah, do, you know, that's, I mean, a lot of people won't, mm. but, a lot. you know, that is stuff that I I can't deal with issues unless I'm aware of them. No, of course. So of that's course. why yeah. I always, say, you know, sometimes I <clears throat> won't necessarily be able to get a resolution to that. No, no, no. Raise the all. issue and no. make sure it doesn't happen yeah. again. Yeah. But, um, but unless people are coming to me saying, you know, actually, this is happening really regularly, mm, mm. I can't address no. it. No, because I, understand. I don't know. But if I know about it, I will then try and address it. Yeah, actually. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 I think, I think the problem with us, then. the problem with us is. You, under, you can understand this happening and they're going to have problems. They're not doing this on purpose. No. They're not doing this, but you're paying for a service. If we went to a wedding, films the ceremony, yeah. didn't bother filming the speeches and then filmed <laughs> the first dance, yeah. they would expect a, you know money taken away. Absolutely. You know. yeah. But you pay a re- um, a right, a reaver, a reaver, <laughs> a reaver. A re- is it a reaver? They call a reaver, it. Yeah, you pay yeah. a reaver this amount of money, and there's no sort of I'm comeback. Sorry about this. There's no yeah. comeback for no, that. No, no, yeah. no. And I, because yeah. when they were striking a few years ago, um, yeah. yeah, it must have been in year seven because Tilly just got on the bus by then, and there was um, the odd day. Sorry here that we've gone there. on buses. No, sorry, because <laughs> 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 we obviously They're have. Important, but it's important for a lot of people. It's just you know, yeah, that's it. It's the safety of our kids. Yeah, you know, she's gone from being a ten year old being walked to school and then two months later she's an 11 year old being stranded at a bus stop yeah 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 and she and and like um what was that oh, oh, sorry, sorry Rach. i forgot i forgot you oh, she lost it yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Sorry, Rach. laughs> I, I do it on purpose <laughs> now it's completely gone <laughs> oh, sorry <laughs> thanks though right moving on so um are you, um, are you abused on the street? Um, so no, is the Good. answer. So I have to say, one of the, um, you know, uh, touch, touching wood, really, I should touch that. Touch wood. So one of the things, so mm. I, I think, um, yeah, I mean, people are lovely, Good. actually. Good. You know, people are brilliant and most people even if they don't like you or disagree with you for whatever reasons are nice, you know, and, and that's one of the things that I always say, um, you know, I have had some issues mm. over the, over the years that I've been a member of parliament. Um, but in general, people are nice. Right. And, you know, as I say, even if they don't agree with you, people are generally just respectful, Good. pleasant, Good. you know, Do you get noticed. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, f- I think that's because of my hair. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, yeah. People, people will, uh, you know, whether they like my hair or not, they got people a have a lot to say about my hair. But, but yeah, and 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 you know that that that's sort of fine, you know. Um, but but yeah, I, I don't, I I don't have, you know, I people don't tend to abuse you in the street. Mm. Um, they might do it on social media. Mm. Um, and via, you know, online forms. Um, and, you know, some of it's pretty, pretty nasty. And actually, you know, my it's my staff who have to sort of, you know, it gets to them as well. Mm. Um, but, and, and we've had some, you know, we've had some difficult, you know, I've had some, you know, we've had issues where we've had to get the police involved over the mm. last. So, you know, but I am, you know, I, I, I consider myself relatively lucky. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, I think mm. with today's technology and with the rise of social media, it's so much easier for someone to have an opinion on something, something that you do, something that you say, and every part of that is criticised. You know, you can say yeah. one tiny thing and you're criticised ten million times. Yeah. You know, it's ridiculous, yeah. but it's their platform to have an opinion, really. So you yeah. can't ever stop yeah. that. No, but, but the source of their opinion it, is yeah, yeah. I mean, I and think it's the way they do it. Mm. Yeah, and I think you know. Um, uh, quite often, you know, some of what, you know, look, I always say, you know, it doesn't matter. You can disagree with me on everything because mm. that is your right because we do still live in a democracy mm. where you can have differences of opinion mm. and you can share that. Mm. But it, but what I'm referring to is I'm not talking about people who are, you know, disagreeing with me on mm. a policy point. No. I'm talking about, you know, um 
you know, the, 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 it's the nasty, it's the yeah. abuse, it's the sort it's of the rudeness, it's yeah. the personal yeah. attack, yeah. it's the vile language. You know, actually, you can have quite legitimately disagree with someone very strongly yeah. without actually it descending into sort of but sometimes yeah. those sort of conversations are good like a good debate yeah, absolutely. is absolutely interesting and then you can actually go away and dissect it and say oh actually that point is good well this point is good and then come That's to right. a conclusion that way yeah. debate form debate you know mm. um sort of strengthens ideas mm. i mean that's the whole point of the house of commons yeah you know you go into a debate on a piece of legislation you listen to what other people are saying you have your views challenged you challenge other people's views and then hopefully the outcome of that is that you end up with a better piece of work yeah. because actually you've you've taken that advice yeah, yeah absolutely. there's a fine line between passion and anger as well you know and mm, i and yeah. i was very good at looking angry when i was actually feeling inside passionate but mm, expressing yeah, in an angry right. way you mm. know what i mean yeah because you've just so, got all these ideas that you go oh i need to get all of this out yeah. but because you do it so quick and so please let me just finish yeah. you know it's just frustration <laughs> you know looks like anger sometimes mm, yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, but, you know, mm. as I say, MPs in general, um, you know, have had, um, I mean, it's it's quite normal for MPs to get death threats. Um, you know, it's quite, it's quite normal for MPs to have, um, you know, I mean, there's quite a lot, you, you know, and this is all political parties, mm. not just one yeah. or the yeah. other. Some of it is quite frightening and, and worrying and and um and, and unfortunately I do put that down to the fact that the narrative about MPs, you know, look, there's six hundred and fifty MPs in this country. You're gonna get your good, your bad and your ugly. <laughs> because mm. that's what happens in any organisation where there's six hundred and fifty mm. people. Mm. Unfortunately with MPs, everything is in the public domain. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, but we're not all bad people and really we want a strong democracy. We want MPs to express views mm. and be mm. different and be who they are. We w we need representatives to not be frightened to say things mm. or express mm. views for fear of, um, you know, what may or may not happen to them. Yeah. And actually, it's not just us. It's our families. <clears throat> you know, my family's local. So, you know, my mum, my sister, my family see this stuff mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. you know and actually mm. it can be quite frightening for of them course. as well yeah, and actually yeah. my friends as well you know yeah. it's um but yeah you know but that's part of the job and people say oh you it know you, you you put yourself there you do it you're right i put myself there and i'm always up for a debate yeah, mm. yeah. but you know i do yeah. have to say yeah, that some of the it's aggression the is the, yeah you know, yeah absolutely yeah but I, I i look at it as think and think if someone agrees with you 100 percent, like if the country all agreed on one policy something's gone wrong. You know, yeah, you need to have exactly that debate. Right. You need to have exactly that right. difference of opinion to actually prove your point almost, Absolutely. don't you? That's right. And you know what? There's very little where everyone will, will yeah. on, on virtually no issue, people will have a homogenous yeah. opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And literally, you know, that the, the, there's a nuance or a different way of looking at everything yeah. um so you can't satisfy no. everyone no. or anything deliver everything to anyone we don't agree on anything <laughs> yeah that's just marriage yeah. though <laughs> there was a time I, I got a friend <laughs> i got a number of friends who are videographers and i got called by a friend um to do a second shooter job he said am i available for a second shoot shooter job i can't remember the day i should remember the day but i can't uh in westminster Ooh, and i said i'm sorry i, I can't do it I'm, I'm already booked I'm gutted because he's a really close friend of mine right. and um, he got someone else to do it and it was a day of the um, that guy um, attacking you know coming onto the bridge with a car oh, crumbs, yeah. and killing the police got the policeman um, the and Palmer, the, yeah. my, the second shooter that took my job had to get on the ground it was yeah, that close oh to it all gosh, it all yeah, happening yeah, yeah. was you in parliament that day yeah i was and uh interestingly enough that day i had uh, a young person with me who um used well at the time she was a looked after child someone that i'd known since before i became an mp and she was doing work experience with me that week and it was horrendous because we got locked down and we were in um you know she was with her, her foster carers were sort of waiting for her to come home and she was doing work experience and we got locked down in Westminster Hall and um, we didn't really sort of understand what was going on at first really because but it, and it was crazy because we saw 
the response unit come through the House of Commons with their guns, their masks, mm. their helmets, oh and clear everyone out. Uh, they were searching the premises and sort of herded us into these areas within the House of Commons for yeah. quite a long time. Because they got rid of Theresa quite quick, didn't they? Because that's yeah. the footage you could see on the news. They, yeah. they that's managed because Theresa May so was So were you insane. allowed your phones and sort of oh, yeah. having the updates and f knowing what was actually going yeah. on outside? Yeah, yeah, we could see what was going on outside via the um, phones and the yeah. internet, but we weren't mm. allowed in our offices, we weren't right. allowed in yeah. the chamber. Oh, no, actually, the people who were stuck, who were in the chamber, got locked in the chamber. Right. Mm. <laughs> So it just basically went on lockdown mm. because I think at the time people were trying to work out, well, the authorities were trying to work out, was this an isolated incident yes. yep, or was yeah. there more to come or mm. was there yeah. um, more going on? And it was it was a really, really difficult and and and. Yeah. yeah, horrific. Because that horrific is, the policeman rates. lost his life, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. PC Keith Barmer. Yeah, Keith, yeah, yeah. Keith Barmer. He's a Charlton Athletic supporter. Yeah. And they've still got his And what they've done at Charlton, I'm a Charlton fan. Oh, I used to be Charlton mascot for 10 yeah. years. And they've made one white seat. In all the mm. reds, there's one white seat. And that's his. Which was his seat. And his family can use that. For yeah, the rest whenever. of for the rest of time. Yeah. So, yeah. But I yeah. I was um I wasn't involved. That sounds really wrong. But I was in an office above Allgate Allgate Station oh, when the seven yeah. seven bombings happened, oh, and crikey. it was that scary. It was yeah, that yeah. same situation where mm. someone comes in, tells you to get away from the windows. You don't know what's going no, on. You've got because right. I was on reception. You've got all these people phoning up saying, "Is my son okay?" Blah blah. And then yeah. you try and phone their desk, and they're not there. And you have to say to the parents, "I can't get hold of them." And obviously, it was very limited mm. phone service. And it is it is horrendously scary. It's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it was scary, it was, and it's and it's really tragic. And it you is. know, it's just a horrific, hor horrific time. Mm. And um, you know, and it just shows us that there is a real threat out there. And you know, it's not just been in London and mm. Westminster. You know, we've seen it in different parts of Europe, which mm. you know, I think all. Uh, democracies you know worried now particularly about certain different mm. sort of yeah. terrorist did it scare you personally on a personal level did you think did you feel safe is, or is it you know yeah. going back up there afterwards um, yeah no I, I i do you know yes of course it was scary you know someone lost you know this was no joke someone mm. yeah. was murdered mm. you yeah. know that's basically and mm. um people were injured and it was horrific um but no i mean i think you know i you know i i know london mm. i know my home yeah you know you you can't let those people stop you from being you know for from being scared but no mm. i mean i think you're always slightly aware of what's around you yeah. and what's going on around you mm. um because you know potentially you are a target not mm. because mm. of who you are but because of what you are yeah yeah absolutely um but yeah i mean i i mean it was you know that week was a uh, one of the worst weeks and and horrific for the people who had to deal with oh Really, bad. the wrong time for the yeah, sorry. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't yeah. win that. No. I didn't think it was going to go. I did glance and think that's not going to go. And I really, <laughs> I really wanted to go for Kelly. <laughs> oh, well, I, I don't think I got that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, but but yeah. I, I mean, it was scary, but we just carried on. Mm -hmm. And I think there was definitely an overwhelming sense of everyone coming together and saying, you know, we are not going to allow these people to stop Absolutely. us from carrying out Good. our business yeah. and mm. and and. And obviously, we haven't. Good, good. That's brilliant. Um, moving on to something else. We always want to know how, how much royal stuff you get involved in. <laughs> so have you been, to, look, I'm, I'm guessing, obviously, the Queen's funeral you must have been invited to. Maybe not. Yeah, I, um, no, I didn't do, no, I had, it's quite interesting. So I, um, so with, with the Queen, I met the Queen um, in 2000 and. 17, I've never I think. seen the Queen in my whole life. I've seen her once, and yeah. that was at Royal Ascot, and she was about this big. Yeah, she's tiny. <laughs> so, um, so basically, there was the anniversary of the Royal Engineers right. being in uh, Chatham Barracks, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. and um, she was the Commander in Chief of the Royal Engineers. Okay. And so she made a visit to Brompton, I think mm. back in, I think I'm sure it was 2017. Mm. And because I was a member of parliament, I was lucky enough to meet her. Mm. And 
and uh, and shake her hand along with the police, the mayor, mm. the um, Lord Lieutenant of Kent, mm -hmm. and some other sort of local dignitaries mm. at the time, which was amazing. Did she chat to you? Uh, yeah. She, nice uh, hair, did you say? Oh, no. <laughs> No, the thing that I, I the thing that, that I, yeah. <laughs> for me, which which sticks in my mind, is that she's incredibly smiley because I had sort of seen her on TV and yeah, thought, she was always very. I thought she was faced. quite yeah, straight yeah, faced, yeah. but actually she was incredibly smiley, mm. and um, so it was the, the interesting thing was, obviously you get told you know you've got you know curtsy and then you don't put your hand out she you you she mm. offers Wait. her hand mm. yeah and obviously she wears gloves and um i remember so there's this little you know little lady who is our queen yeah uh puts a hand out to to me and i was expecting it to be a really sort of you know a, a, a sort of like a quite a, 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 yeah. a, a, week. a week yeah oh yeah. my goodness well, she's been doing <laughs> it for a long time <laughs> queen. it was a really strong handshake really? oh yes so and i was really take uh, that's what really threw, threw yeah. me yeah, yeah. because uh, you know i just thought it would be where she's shaking mm. people's hands all the time it would be you know okay. sort of just a more of a hand brush <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. As yeah of course to a, a proper handshake yeah. but if anything yeah. she's got the strongest handshake <laughs> well <laughs> that's right but 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 i it wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> and, um, yeah. you know, because obviously she was, you know, quite elderly at that time. So, yeah, that's what took that. That's what took me back. Mm. How um, purposeful her handshake is. Mm. So there we yeah. go. Oh. So you didn't. That, so, um, yeah. Did so, all the MPs get invited? To no. Or? So we didn't get. So we didn't get invited to the funeral. So um, basically the there was only a few. There was only a few members of parliament that were involved in the actual official sort of a uh, funeral mm. uh, proceedings and uh, I did miss out because um, under under Boris in his last week I was made deputy chief whip right okay. and the whip's office play a massive role in those and it yeah. just changed isn't it yeah. and it just changed, just changed. so uh, my co uh, the guy um, my friend Craig Whitaker who MP took over from me um, he actually walked. Uh, he he had a proper role within wow. uh, within the, yeah. within the funeral. But no, we Wasn't meant to be. Yeah, we we um, watched it online, um, and <clears throat> we were able to obviously go and um, visit her yeah. coffin yeah. when mm. it was at laying in, laying in state in at the Westminster. Mm. And obviously there are a number of events that we held within mm -hmm. within Westminster um sort of sort to mark it. But that was a that was a crazy day because um actually in the thing so I think that I was the last minister to speak at the dispatch box in the House of Commons under um Queen Elizabeth II's oh, right. government. Wow. Because... I'll use that in a quiz. Yeah, so, <laughs> I, well, I think I w was the last uh, minister to speak because what happened was um, I was doing a debate and all of us, I mean, there was pandemic. I mean, we knew something was going on because we yeah. saw, you know, everything sort of mm. came alive. And, and obviously what we, what we, you know, obviously when they made the announcement, it probably happened prior to that. Yeah, yeah it was around the five, six o'clock time, wasn't it? Yeah. I was at the Belfry at the time playing golf. Oh, were you? Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's yeah. Craig Whit um No, no, Craig Tracy, another one of my uh, friend in pieces. Anyway, we won't. Okay. Yeah. I'm going well. <laughs> yeah, I'm going yeah that's when it was yeah. announced. While I was mm, getting yeah. ready, I finished a round and getting ready to go and mm. eat. And mm. that's when it was announced. So it's around the yeah. five, six mm. o'clock time. Mm. Yeah. 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 And, uh, but yeah, it was really, it was, well, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, sort of, I never thought that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, she's been in our lives, our whole lives. Well, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it was a big, it was a big, big shock. You know, I think everyone was genuinely, genuinely, you know, sad. Yeah. 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 Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. And it was so well done. The funeral was so well mm. done. And it, I don't know if you watched The Crown as well, do you? No, I don't actually. Right? But they did a really good job at it. Mm. Good tip yeah. of the hat to her as well, mm. to yeah. be honest. You know, and I know there's some controversy around The Crown and what they've done and what they've said. But yeah. to her, it was perfect. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so yeah, that was uh, you know um, 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 unbelievable, really. 
Um, but yes, yeah, so I only ever met the Queen once, and um, uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people never get to meet the Queen, so mm. I was so actually, it's you know, it's, it's I have a picture. You can't see my face. It's just me shaking her hand. And, but she's smiling and I love, the, you know, but you know it's me because of the hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, right. um, which, you know, actually was, wow, you know. Yeah. Never yeah. thought you're not I'd met a king yet. queen. Uh, yes, I have. Oh, have you? Uh, right. yeah, you when so, he was king or when he was prince? So I met him when he was prince. Yeah. Um, but also um, March 20, hang on, what year yeah, so March last year, I was made um, a privy councillor. Okay. So I'm one of the um, King's privy council. Right, so. Can you give us a bit more detail on that? Yeah, I, so. You know, ask me, Minions, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, ask so, <laughs> so, so basically, it's a really old, old um, tradition. It goes mm. right back for, you know, uh, uh, it goes right back to, I think, sort of Henry VIII days and um basically the king of the day used to before we have this operation you would have your um you'd have a privy council of your councillors who would be your advisors Mm. oh right okay i was Um, one of those right yeah so when it was you know direct you know so you have an advisor to the king well but there's lots of us (laughs) Um, (laughs) don't you have to tell people that (laughs) it doesn't sound good when you say that um but it's it's really it's a a really uh uh, sort of a any sort of uh, a, a privilege to to, to be yeah. it basically so what happens now the privy council today is more or less made up of cabinet members who of the government of the day okay, okay. Um, but there are a number of people that are privy councillors so you know there's a number of opposition members mm. and but it's one of those things that you you once you're made a privy councillor you're a privy councillor for life oh yeah. nice right how oh, brilliant do you get chosen for that or do you have to so elected so normally or? so the reason i was made Raffle. privy count <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. so uh what happens is if you're in the cabinet yeah in general you become a privy councillor so you'll become a, a right honorable mm. um i was made a privy councillor because the convention was deputy chief whips become privy councillors okay. <gasps> so that's how it was honored mm. because i was a deputy chief whip so even though i wasn't attending cabinet it was convention that deputy chief would okay. become privy councillor, so that's why I was given the opportunity to do that, which was, you know, real. Mm. You know, I'm really, really yeah. pleased. Well, um, I just keep thinking of films when you've got a king there, and then you get someone that goes <laughs> <laughs> to the king, and then they go off with his head. <laughs> but it's meant to be private, and the king still has privy council meetings all of the time. Okay, and but. Generally, the ones that go to the every meetings the are ones. the cabinet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Penny Morden is the president of, okay. the, of the council uh, as the leader of the House of Commons, and um, the king will or the queen then or you know there's a convention. They're always held standing up, so their meetings at Buckingham right. Palace with the people standing up rather yeah. than sat down. Right. Okay. And there's sort of a, a ceremony that we have to go through when you become, when you get sworn into the council. Okay. Um, and, uh, Is that like a day long thing or? No, 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 no. It's only just a few, you know, just a, a couple of minutes. at the beginning of a privy council meeting, um, which is meant to be secret. You're not meant to disclose anything that goes on at privy council. Oh. Uh, and that hence We've privy. just had someone from the magic circle in. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. We, we, and, we, yeah, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and um but yeah i mean i for me uh, you know it's an immense privilege um because uh, yeah i mean Who uh, you know I, I and also you just sort of think crumbs you know i'm a i'm a, <laughs> I'm a local girl from strood you know i've and i've been able to you know and there i am you know it was oh. i was sort of a bit taken back by it yeah. because you know yeah. i'm Would going be. to buckingham palace and and you know getting an opportunity to speak directly to the king. Yeah. You know, it's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, I still, it's I'm amazing. still, uh, things, you know, I don't take it for granted. No, without you know. a doubt. You should be proud of yourself. Yeah. Being, being really so right. I was very, you know, so that's brilliant. And uh, he's actually really a nice guy. So when I met him, um, he's got a great sense of humour. He is really interested in what's going on. Mm. He's very engaged, so he wants to ask questions. Mm. But he's got a sense of humour, mm. and uh, so I'm a big. I'm actually my, 
yeah, I'm a fan of him. Yeah. I, since mm. Having met him and, and sort of, because again, you only ever get told yep. what, what you read in the media. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And then, and then when uh, you meet They don't want to talk about anything nice, do they? <laughs> they don't want to talk about, you know, bad things. You Absolutely. Know? So, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, he, yeah, as I say, I'm a, a fan of him. Good. Yeah. And actually, I haven't got a problem with Charles personally. No, no. Not at all. And, and I, and I would also say as well, um, <clears throat> You know, actually, I have huge respect. My respect for the royal family has increased since I've been a member of parliament because I have seen some of them at work mm. and I've been incredibly impressed by some of them. And I don't think we really understand the level of work that some of them mm. do mm. because it's not publicised. And uh, even with regards to um, uh, the uh, Princess Beatrice and Eugenie, I mean, I was at a, 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 um, a Queen's Walls function once and those two girls the way they engage with the businesses the way they engage with the, i mean they were fantastic mm. and i was mm. so impressed with them and you don't hear anything about and you those. never hear anything about mm. them but the way mm. i mean and they were genuinely interested <coughs> in the people they were talking to mm. and i was and, and it was really mm. nice to see yeah. so did you speak to them yeah but yeah. again normal young women yeah yeah, yeah. who um you know fulfilling a duty incredibly yeah. respectful but it's uh, weird because they say that you know they're all privileged and all that but yeah. these people in my opinion yeah. are imprisoned yeah they are in a way they are aren't they you know yeah. they can't live their life that we can just do anything we want mm. they, yeah. they can't they're imprisoned yeah. but, but they you know work in a rich way obviously so hard though yeah. they literally they just it's work 24 7 it's their life. yeah and they I mean, do, and and some of them do it incredibly well. And, mm. and you know, you speak as you find. I mean, the one that uh, you know, Princess Anne. You know, when you see her at some of these functions where she just get up and she speak off script for a long time about these. You know, I mean, she's a, a, a superb as well. Mm. I mean, they're all. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I, 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 as I say, having been a member of Parliament and seen some of that engagement on the outside, yeah. I've become even more. Um, respectful respectful mm. of, of what the royal family what do, do. Mm. Yeah. And, and and actually and they care you know it's it, mm. you know, it, yeah everyone everyone ha makes mistakes yeah. but 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 they take it seriously mm. 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 so royal weddings no no <laughs> no no oh. they're not on my speed dial Kel, William, <laughs> want to come to our wedding? Yeah, no, I haven't been to any royal weddings. Oh, um, okay. um, the only thing that I was very privileged <clears throat> and incredibly lucky to do was I was at the coronation. Oh, right. Okay. So I, yeah. yeah that's maybe what I see then. Yes, that's yeah, what maybe it, what, what the I see. Coronation. I did a little bit of research and forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> well done, yeah. well done. So <laughs> I, I'm really not that, I've never been that lucky before, but I literally, um, obviously, all MPs wanted to be able to be at the coronation. Well, actually, everyone wanted to be at the coronation yeah. and they had to limit the numbers. Okay. So there was a ballot for MPs um, and we had to submit into a ballot to get a to get a ticket yeah. and I was I won the fact you know I was one of the ones that right. wow. so it literally was, the it was a lottery yeah. it was a lottery yeah. and um, it's the fairest way to do it yeah, yeah. so it was, it was it was yeah because there was only a limited number mm. of, of seats and uh, yeah so I mean oh, phenomenal really um, so just, was it just yourself but it was, yeah, yeah so you don't it was literally just individual tickets yeah and um, so when we we was we were sat in a, um, a part of, Westmin uh, of Westminster Abbey. So as you came into the Abbey, you had the, the nave and then uh, there was, so I was sat with the, the lords, mm. people who had got tickets and, and us uh, were sat together. Um, and that was all party. So mm. it was all mixed up as well. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah. just the yeah. politicians, like you say, you, you know, <laughs> politicians in that corner. Yeah, you know? different yeah. parties, but you, you work with these people. You know, yeah. they're, in theory, they're 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 work they're your mates. Yeah, yeah, right. you know. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, so I mean, literally, I was just a guest, um, and uh, obviously, we saw all, everyone who walked through, um, and you know, we were very impressed with our penny. I say our penny, Penny Morden. Mm. She was just, you know, didn't she look? Oh, she, she looks amazing. Stunning. You know, uh, amazing, mm. and uh, that's the one with that lovely dress, isn't it? Oh, I love that dress yeah. and the colour. Didn't she design oh. it herself or something? Yeah, she did. So yeah. the Privy Council uniform, 
is a male uniform, obviously. Yeah, yeah. and she sort of sculpted it in a... Sh- yeah. It looks so cool. It's like something out of Star Wars. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Yeah. And, and it looked good. It looked mm. good. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it was, rather than wearing sort of the, the, yeah. the, the yeah. male equivalent, mm. it was it was really, right. Really good. Yeah, very good. So how, what did you wear and how long did it take you to pick something? <laughs> well, literally, I... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I literally... There's a, a dress company that I always buy my stuff online from and I saw something that I thought was... So I bought that online and a great lady called Elaine Wilkinson over in Gillingham made my hairpiece. Right. Um, she sort of works making sort of fascinators and hatinators and I have to get her in yeah, she can come in. and she's yeah. great and <laughs> she just yeah she she did a wonderful job sort yeah. of um you know making me like a i had a navy it was blue because um you know despite i'm wearing red today no, no. <laughs> even though i, I do actually actually, actually i do sweats, like blue and green they're my colors you know <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so yeah it was uh turquoise blue with a navy blue navy blue hat mm. and shoes oh, right. and nice. stuff like that so yeah so nice. yeah but i mean it was a phenomenal day it was brilliant and you know uh, um you know the program the invitation and I just think, well, I've got my little things to pass on to my nieces. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Us Brits do know yeah. how to knock out a ceremony, though, don't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. And everyone was watching it. And yeah. uh, and the sad thing actually was, if you were in, if you were there for the coronation, you missed all the oh, stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I always say, actually, some of these things, you know, Only people watch watching on the TV yeah. would have had a great... Yeah. So was there like a celebration afterwards or was it sort of like he's crowned, you can go home now? Or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, apart from for the sort of, you know, the, the dignitaries yeah. and the foreign, you know, our, 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 our guests sort of as a country and senior senior members of government, mm. um, there was, a, but for the rest of us, it was, you know. Yeah. So you didn't have a role to play as far as no. catering for foreign, um, you know, No, rights. no. Um, so I was, uh, so I, yeah, so I was just the backbencher. So I wasn't a minister at that time. So um, there were, there were functions, mm. but that was only for the, you know, mm. senior the you know the cabinet members yeah, yeah, and, you yeah. know and, and stuff like ministers mm. so i was just um yeah i was part of the congregation right so and then actually you know all we did afterwards we went over because we had to go back to the house of commons afterwards i think some of us were just sort of you know th- there was no bar open or anything like that <laughs> but um we all just sort of sat there going oh my god you know we've yeah. just this been to the, yeah. we've yeah. just been to the coronation yeah. this is oh, phenomenal amazing, you know who would ever y- y- most of us well, don't it's the first get one win- in 72 years isn't it? <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> yeah so, that's yeah, brilliant phenomenal. so going back to obviously when you have to put bills across and you have to stand up in parliament do you get oh it, you enjoy what you do clearly but do you get a little bit of but a little bit nervous or a little bit sort of oh god I need to take a breath sort of thing or yeah I I think you do I I remember when I did my maiden speech the first time I spoke in parliament my leg kept shape I was standing up and my leg wouldn't stop doing that and it was and and I just thought everybody could see my leg going like yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah you sort of well it's like if you talk to actors or actresses you know they will always say oh you know they always feel even they before they do something there there's always a a bit bit there has to be a little bit yeah Yeah. and i think if you're not nervous then you're you're probably not going to do your best that's exactly what we say for weddings the day i'm not nervous about filming someone's special day where i get one chance to film it is the day i'm going to stop yeah Yeah. absolutely and i and i think it's probably probably the same and i think it depends as well you know are you going to say something controversial are you you, do you know what i mean are you going to are you going to get grief for it you know who's going to be watching you know how the government are going to respond how your colleagues will respond mm. so i think there's a whole number of questions that go through your mind when you're sort of thinking about what you're going to say yeah um but yeah of course you sort of get apprehensive i mean mm. you, you know because you care yeah of course, of course. <laughs> really? yeah. yeah yeah have you ever been um obviously you've been in the, in the in the house when it's really kicked off between labor and conservatives and even the others um have you ever then finished and go out the back with the, the people that you've been around with and go, cool, that really hurt? 
Yeah, I mean, you, you do. I mean, uh, again, quite <clears throat> often, a lot of it in the. So, for example, even when I. We're only was, seeing the bad bits. Yeah, again. you do. I mean, and also there's sort of. Even as a minister, so there's been times when I've had my opposite. Put the, you Number. know the yeah, shadow. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know we've had a dust up in the chamber, mm. and then it's and then you walk out the door and it's Bump into it's it. not it doesn't it, it tends not yeah. to carry on. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Um, you know there might be some exceptions to the rules, but that's more down to them as individuals. Mm. Than yeah. Yeah. The minister and the shadow, as opposed of to. Course. Has anyone? Well, you probably won't answer this anyway. <laughs> but like, has there ever been a sort of you know, face to face out. Uh, it's carried on outside to the point where people are about to go hang about. So, you know, if you no, can't learn, you not to... that I've witnessed. No, no. Not that I've witnessed. Of course, there's been arguments, but, you know, between people on their own side. Mm. Yeah. So, mm. but not that I've witnessed, no. Mm. I mean, people are, you know, yes, this is important stuff. So yes, people yeah. get sort of this high emotion, but yeah, I mean, you, you need to be able to control yourself. Mm. Mm. How often do you um, liaise with like the Prime Minister yourself? Well, it depends, really. I mean, because you, 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 you tend to only sort of speak to him when you need to. Mm. Um, but we see him quite a lot. You know, he's around a lot. He's in the tea room. You know, here coming after PNC. He's in the tea room. It just don't. <laughs> yeah. Seems weird, doesn't it? Yeah. Like a little cat flap on the apprentice. Right. Of course they've got to eat as well. But <laughs> yeah. just saying, like, he's just in the canteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's pretty good at getting around to seeing people. Mm. And you can, if you need to talk to him, you generally will be able to. Right, okay. And. And um, he has sort of how it works in Parliament is that he has something called a parliamentary private secretary, which is basically another MP mm. who is is sort of responsible for that engagement with members of Parliament. Okay. So, you know, if you need You've if you need something, you, you sort of you sort of say, oh, Craig, Almost like Craig Williams is his current yeah. PBS. Yeah. Yeah. And we say, Craig. I really need to talk to the prime minister about this, or mm. and but, but so you get opportunities, yeah, as well. yeah. and we all have his number as well, so okay. we can you can share that with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. So, <laughs> you know, we um, you come on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, and and, and and I have to say, Rishi is pretty. You know, he's pretty communicate. You know, he's a good. Mm. He's good at communicating, and mm. he's pretty easy to get hold of. Oh, good, mm. good. If you need to, but yeah. you know, you need I'm, to respect sure the fact that he's a prime minister. Of yeah, course, yeah. So and I'm sure you've experienced some that are hard to get old. Exactly, because <laughs> you've been through what four or five? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So David Cameron, Theresa May, um, Boris, Boris, yeah, yep. um, uh, Liz. Liz yeah. <laughs> Couldn't remember her name for some reason. It was so <laughs> quick. Yeah, yeah, five, five. yeah. five. Yeah. Oh, mate. Oh. Okay. Uh, which has been interesting, and uh, then uh, obviously David Cameron, the first prime minister I served under, mm. um, has come back as a foreign yeah. secretary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Interesting. Uh, who was a very nice man. I was going to ask the question, I but say, I didn't know whether to. Did you yeah. Yeah, get, get on the right of him? <laughs> well, yeah. uh, you know, he obviously was the prime minister when I stood for election yeah. and he was very nice to me personally. I, yeah. And, um, he, you know, he was, I always sort of, I mean, obviously debate what you can about the decisions he took as prime minister, yeah. but, yeah. but as an individual, uh, you know, I had a great respect for him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like, I liked him. Mm. I've got to be honest. I liked him. I'd lost a bit of respect for him where he left because of the decision, Yeah, mm. you know, you should, you should have stuck it out. You know, just because he didn't get the decision that he wanted, yeah. you know. People, I think, but, were, <clears throat> I mean, you know, I think a lot of people were very sad. Um, I do think it would have been difficult for him to have continued. Maybe. Mm. He, he was fully uh, he on, have, the, yeah, on he, the stay, wasn't he? Yeah, he was fully they, they, they would have made it difficult for him. Um, but, you but but you know, it's yeah. uh, it's been uh, a roller coaster really over these years. Yes, uh, from that moment. From mm, that yeah. moment, everything happened, didn't it? Absolutely. Everything. Yeah. So, so it was been, going to be hard for whoever was there. Yeah. You know. But, uh, it's been an interesting, <laughs> yes, yeah. interesting Definitely. time. Yeah. Definitely. Um, do you want to name your favourite out of the five? You don't have to. <laughs> no, she can't do that. <laughs> no, actually, yeah, I don't really have it. No. Not really. <laughs> I mean, no, no, I'm not going to. No. Oh, well, I'm going to say the current one. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to say the current one. <laughs> 
you know <laughs> ultimately though it is like a you know it's a work environment mm, yeah you know, they are the you know you will be happy with some of the things they do and say yeah, you'll be unhappy with some and of the things you do or say and unfortunately that's his job he's never and gonna the, yeah. he's never gonna please everyone and even not gonna his own please party. his mps and, no. and and no none of them none of them do and will and um but again you know the beauty of it is if i've got a disagreement with what the prime minister says you know, I deal with it in turn. You know, yeah. I, I, yeah. and we do. I yeah, mean, that's why we have it. the whips office. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, one of the functions when I was a whip, one of the functions of the whips office is to basically make sure you are the prime minister's eyes and ears and enforcers yeah. in the House of Commons. Mm -hmm. You work mm. for the prime minister, and it's for you to be able, as a whip, to be able to pass on concerns of MPs. Mm deal with any issues that they may have, try and get those issues resolved. Um, and that's a function of the Whip's office. Mm. Mm. So that he or her, whoever's the Prime Minister, understand what the parliamentary party are thinking about what they're doing and saying. Mm. Absolutely. Brilliant. But it, people forget sometimes that it is a job, don't they? They think it's just their way of life and they have to serve us as the general public. But they forget it's a job at the end of the day. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a vocation. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's, it's got a to have a passion for it. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to say, right, enough is enough. You know, I've got to switch off, otherwise I'm going to have no personal life. I'm going to have, <laughs> have no... Have switched off? That, <laughs> is, that, that is what... I mean, this is, the, this is the interesting thing I say. I've, I'm lucky. My friends... My friendship group are not politicians. Yeah, yeah. My mates, the people that I uh, my go to, they're mm. they're normal people who've yeah, actually yeah. all been very you know good, and I'm very lucky. And mm. they've put up with a lot mm. because you know I've missed birthdays, weddings, um, holidays, mm. uh, trips. Um, you know I don't see them because I can't get out of Parliament because you're yeah. in Parliament yeah. and you, you 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 have to be there. You yes, can't there, just. Yeah. Sorry, Same guys, I've got to go. I've yeah. got a birthday yeah. party. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. The massive debate. Oh, That's right. Just, gonna, just got to go. My yeah. mate's got a 21st. That's it. So <laughs> I, I'm, I always say I'm lucky. So my mates that I've still got yeah. after all this time, I know are my true mates because yeah. they basically put up with me being a really crap friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they still sort of support me, so I'm lucky. <laughs> so can you see yourself doing it till, till you pushed out? Yeah. <laughs> or whatever you know yeah I will and I would say yeah that's exactly it you yeah. know I will do it until I'm pushed out because yeah. you know for me it's been the greatest privilege of my life to represent the place I have literally been born and bred in and my family come from and you know I, I'm i not saying it because I'm the member of parliament but I you know I yes my uh, where we live has got faults but oh, yeah, everywhere I'm incredibly else. proud of where I come from I'm incredibly proud of this constituency and the people within it and you know I do want to, you know I'm glad it's me who has got who isn't you know where I can push for those things that I want for this area and other people want for this area so yeah I will you know, I I will have to be pushed out mm. because I want to be able to continue doing that and and being that voice uh, for for the area because you know quite often you know my you know if we're talking about things at a local level of course you know on national different policies but from a local standpoint more often than not. I'm exactly in agreement with my constituent yeah. because yeah. I am one of the constituents yeah, one, that, I, yeah. that yeah. I try and represent. Yeah. So, but yeah, so yeah, like you say, it has its up. faults, but there's some beautiful, like Rochester High Street. I love Rochester High Street. Yeah. It's like going on holiday, just going down there. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. We've got yeah, some lovely just, places. It's just high Street and the oh, it's just amazing. Yeah. But we, you know, where else can you drive past a thousand-year-old castle? Literally, yeah. drive past it, and it's that distance yeah. away from yeah. you. We do that on a school run. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. And but. It, you know, but it's not just Rochester. You know, you've got up now. Yes. You've got. I mean, we've got. Um, you know, we've got internationally significant uh, bird breeding sites out on the peninsula. Mm. So some of our um, habitats out there are internationally important. Right. Do, do, do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we've got we've got a, a deep water port. Um, at Thamespool, we've got a river, we've got all this history, we've got, you know, Horning and Cuxton, mm. you know, again, they're so so different to, to Rochester, and they're mm, the, only, course, the yeah. only other side of the river. Um, 
you know, we there, there's so much here. It's so diverse. We've got all the. I mean, the history is immense yeah. across mm. the Mid- Medway Town, and our industrial history as well as. Um, you know, but if you, I mean, if, I, I always say the classic thing. You know, when uh, at one point on the River Medway, we had something like thirty-eight cement works, wow. and one of the things I said mm. in my. Um, mm. Blue circle was everywhere, wasn't it? Yeah. Remember back yeah. then? Yeah, and and so I always say to people, if you see a chalk cliff, that's a sign there was a cement works. Yeah, dug it all yeah. out. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And actually, one of the things I said in my maiden speech when I was first elected was that um, the um, concrete that went to rebuild San Francisco after the earthquake in the you know early part of the um, 20th century mm. came from the River Medway. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> so that's so, that little claim to fame. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. And there's loads of things like right. that. You yeah. know, some Francis Drake All the way up the to sale. All, you know, paper mills as well. Yeah, paper that's mills right, everywhere. Because yeah. we took that's the kids. That's why I was in the paper mill industry. Because so. right, yeah. we took the kids down to Portsmouth, didn't we? Yeah. And we went on the Victory and everything yeah. like that. And there was a part of it that Built said, oh, Chatham. Yeah. yeah. And then we said, look, kids, this is where you're from. Oh my God, that's amazing. We didn't realize that. And it's little things like that. You can say, yes, that's where we're from. You know, it's amazing. So uh, when we've got loads of that and there's loads of snippets of really interesting local history and, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, Aveling and Porter in Strood, the the building, you know, which obviously was just where the Mm. Civic Centre Park, Mm. you know, they made, you know, steamrollers, Mm. but they were the, 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 what they made was shipped all over the world, yeah. they were the, one of the most important yeah. mm. engineer. And you know that was just one organisation mm. in Strood because mm. we had um, lots of engineering in Strood at one time. Um, and yeah, so I mean, uh, just some of the things are just quite phenomenal. You know, uh, not in my constituency, but we're the home of the Jubilee Clip. You know, mm. of course, yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah, I know, and I use Jubilee Clips <laughs> all, all for a time. long time. And, and it's when you just go under the tunnel and you see it on the left, don't you? Exactly. Where the Jubilee Come where, where, you wouldn't even think it was from here and yeah. there, so there's so many so many things and yeah. and yeah i mean i just yeah, it's uh yeah there's a lot of these towns i think we're very spoiled and we don't mm. realize mm. we are until we actually sit down and say this is what we've got in this county yeah. we don't actually realize and no. we are very yeah. spoiled we take yeah. it for granted i think and, and that's right and you know there are things that need improving or there are things that go wrong um but we but it's so diverse i always say mm. my constituency is so diverse even though relatively it's a small geographical yeah. area mm. but we've got villages we've got towns um i know we've got pressures with house building and 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 pressures on our green spaces at the moment but you know, we've got some really lovely places to live here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we have. Absolutely. Brilliant. So, thank you so much for coming you. on. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> this really is usually where it. I say, was you nervous? But you ain't going to be nervous. <laughs> no, <laughs> You've no. dealt with more uh, questions than this before. So, no, no, brilliant. No, no, thank, thank you very you much. much. Really enjoyed you. it. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. Oh, that's the other thing. The other thing we don't ever mention. It, um, <laughs> we don't ever mention. Well, we, should, we, we usually have businesses in. Oh, right. And we yeah. usually say, how do you, they get hold of you? But, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, do you want to do that? Yeah. That's right. This is going to be the worst state you've ever made no, no, no. <laughs> um so i mean basically you know people can telephone me or email me i've got a website all they need to do is put my name into the uh, browser and my email right. address will pop up but basically my email is kelly.tolhurst.mp at parliament.uk and you know if you do have cons- issues or you know i deal with a lot of casework i did i try and help people as much as i can so uh and i always say to people get in touch because mm. lots of other people do get in touch with to with me um about their problems and i'm able to help them so uh, that's what we're there for what about sort of here we go this is always uh, happens, sorry. right? we go thank you for coming on the show <laughs> yeah, and then there's another 10 minute conversation <laughs> afterwards yeah, what about not just problems like praises and everything like that as well if someone's done something really good in the yes, community yes absolutely obviously we're saying a lot of negative things like get in touch if you've got a problem but what happens if someone's done something really good in the community 
actually, and they want to share that. Like, yeah, like absolutely. Like started a really good podcast or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I, <laughs> I was thinking... I don't know anyone. <laughs> <laughs> doing a charity walk. A charity walk. Yeah, Rachel's got no. a charity walk she's doing for um, Demelza. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that's very to Peru to do the Inca Trail. Oh, wow. Yeah, but don't you class that as a jolly? I class no, it as a jolly. No, it's not a jolly. When it's I've not going to be a jolly. No, it's really not. I mean, it's doing nice the Inca to trail. do the Inca Trail. I mean, mm. that's going to be really She could do phenomenal. exactly the same distance around here, couldn't she? <laughs> Yeah, but it's not quite the same, is it? <laughs> I don't know if you'll get. I don't know, I don't know if you'll get the sponsorship, the sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> for just walking around strewn yeah. four times, you know, whatever. Um, but no, you're, you're you're right. Look, positive things, are, and people do mm. actually. Yeah. So, uh, you know, people are good, and actually, people are asked my. Oh, we've got this person who's done this, that, and the other. How can we help them? And you know, oh. so it's not all negative. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and also just flagging it because sometimes you know, something's great, greats happen. We can because we we've got a platform. We can give them recognition. Yeah. Um, mention it in the House of Commons. You know, something positive, or you know, share something. So mm. yeah, no, positive stuff is great as oh, well. Good. Yeah. <laughs> good. But people do contact me about positive stuff good. as well. Good, that's what we yeah, want. Yeah, absolutely. Nice positive note to end it on. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for watching or listening. I would give you the details, but if you're watching or listening, you know the details. So <laughs> that's how good we are, Kel. That's why we don't get anyone on here. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs>